Hello YouTube and welcome to the long-awaited Purple Palace renovation and tour video. This journey starts with a 45 minute drive north of my hometown with my brother to look at this RV that was only posted for 8 minutes before I found it. I didn't film the tour and test drive, but after careful review and negotiation, I bought her that day. I was the first person to view her and I fell in love right away. I got her for a steal at $2,800. I was so excited I had to celebrate, of course. I don't know about you, but food is the best celebration. So enjoy this slow pour of syrup on my French toast. Yeah. Before I got started transforming her into the Purple Palace, first I had to get her cleaned up and debugged. The vents and cabinets were full of stink bugs. You see me here taking them down and putting them back up. It was a long process and there was three of them. One here in the bedroom and then there's one in the bathroom and one over the bunk. There were also a few things I removed like the microwave because I use an air fryer and a chair bolted in that I didn't need so I could put in a wicker cabinet that you will see later. This is what she looked like first. Next paint party. I invited my cousins, friends, and family to help get her painted to the many shades of purple I envisioned. This day, we were able to get the cabinets and hardware painted in a few of the walls. This was the only real time I had help through this process, and I was very grateful for that. But I did most of the renovation myself. To prep the exterior for paint, I sanded down a patch that was from the previous repair. And then I hand washed it from top to bottom, including scrubbing the roof, which I did not record because I was terrified to do it without supervision. But I got it done. I didn't mention this, but I was parked at a family friend's house to do the renovation. They had a big yard and places for me to plug in to make this process easier. Then I proceeded to figure out my paint strategy that came from trial and error. I used two gallons of regular exterior house paint and hand painted the first coat. You see here I tried to use a roller and it did not go the way that I thought. So I switched strategies and just got me a brush and hand painted. I had re no real strategy trying to figure this out and how I wanted to do it or how it was going to come out. I just kept painting and painting until I got tired. This is what I managed to get done at the end of day one. My mom came and helped paint for the rest of the days until it was fully painted. I was so glad she was able and wanted to help with this process. Thank you, mom. I did the second coat with the cheap paint gun I got off Amazon. It took me forever to figure out this paint gun and how to thin the paint 
so that it would go through the little hole to spray out. But once I got it started and figured it out, and after a few long days of painting, the Purple Palace was born. The Purple Palace is painted on the outside. to do with this. <laughs> so dumb. Spraying it today. I still got so much more to do on the inside, but outside is done. Fun. Here is the before and after. Before I finished the transformation, I did a few handy woman projects before unpacking and moving in. This included making shelves to utilize the closet space better, which you see me doing here very unprofessionally. But I did not hurt myself in the process, but I do not recommend you do this at home. <laughs> I also made a stand and pedestal for the portable toilet to sit higher on top of the original opening because I ripped off the toilet because I do not do black tanks. I ended up getting my stuff out of storage early so that I didn't have to pay for another month. That's why you see stuff everywhere. What you see is a work in progress. It was really hard to do everything when there was stuff in the way, but I made it work. the back wall because it was crumbling from old age I guess. I put in some new insulation and material called plastics. It's made from recycled plastic, it's waterproof and flexible. Then I wallpapered the whole room. I ended up downsizing a lot to fit and I tried to sell some of it but ultimately I ended up donating most of it. Then, I had to escape the Northeast winter and go back to Florida. I have been a snowbird now two times in different rigs. It was so nice and warm when I got back. I am parked in the backyard of a lady. I am bartering services for a free parking and hookup, but I will tell you more about that in another video. Hello, I'm Green Tasha. This is my Purple Palace. I'm going to take you on a tour right now. As we walk in the front door, we are greeted by friends. My toy chihuahua pup slash guard dog. Over the door, I have my collection of shot glasses from different places I've traveled. To the right is the wicker cabinet armoire that I mentioned earlier. I purchased this off of Facebook Marketplace for $20. It was white and I spray painted it gold. Inside the top area is where I store my air fryer, blender, and some dry pantry items. In the drawers is my mini apothecary of herbs and spices and teas, and the bottom drawer is where I store my food storage containers. In the top cabinet I forgot to open is where my small appliances like toaster, juicer, and rice cooker are. The overcap bunk is a three-part space. One for storage, two an extra sleeping area, and three where I just toss stuff. This area is home to some plants, my record collection, books, dress-up box, memorabilia, my outdoor cabana, my yoga mat, and various other things that don't always have a home. Below that is the cockpit driving area. 
When in parked mode, I store my trash and recycle and also my reusable bags. Next, we move over to what you see when you first walk in, which is the dinette. It's my work area and social area. Yes, I covered up the seats with leopard print and I love it. I have a mini obsession with this print, so I had to include it. On the table, I put a basket for all my journals and planners and of course my book, which is available on Amazon. In the top cabinet is my office and work-related supplies like my printer, extra paper, pens, batteries, etc. Oh, and more journals. Don't judge me. On the only real usable wall, I spray painted it gold and put up some artwork here along with my diploma and degree. Moving right along to the kitchen, this space is definitely small, but I have made good use of the storage in order to make it work. I have hung my knives and essential cooking tools on the wall, and above the stove is more food storage, because your girl likes to cook and eat. I have a propane four burner stove and oven that I cook with frequently. Below the stove is a small storage area behind the hot water heater and I put a few quick grab items. In the drawers you have your basic essential items like cutlery and various cooking tools and of course a junk drawer. In the above the sink cabinet I store all of my serving dishes plates, bowls, cups, mugs. Next to the sink is the fridge. I replaced the fridge with a regular dorm size because the original didn't work anymore, but it was cute. Below the fridge is a cabinet that I used to put my pots and pans. Next to that is where I store my parchment paper and aluminum foil. And next to that is where I store my toolboxes and related items. This is a sink cover I made and this is my compost container. Moving right along to the bathroom. There is a nice big medicine cabinet above the sink. And I put some string lights up from the Dollar Tree to give some more light. The hanging storage has towels in them, but it was laundry day, so one is empty. Also, I have my essential oils in this shelf. Here's the portable toilet. It's pretty easy to use, but I hope to upgrade to a compost toilet eventually. Inside the cabinet is basic bathroom items and such, you know, essential health and beauty items. And below, the same with also some cleaning supplies. Yes, there is a bathtub and shower in here. When it's not in use, I store my laundry, my extra five gallons container for water, and my cooler. I put an extra rod up to put my towel. And basically this is covered up when not in use. And there is the extra vent I mentioned earlier. There's a slidable privacy door with a mirror built in. Behind the bathroom are two additional storage cabinets. The top one I use to store my art supplies, one of two fire extinguishers on board, and my Berkey water filter system. I also attached hanging shoe storage on the back of the doors for extra storage. In the bottom is smaller and I store my buddy heater and other miscellaneous items. Moving right along to my bedroom boudoir of the palace. 
There's quite a lot of storage in this room and I add it even more to utilize the space for all of my stuff. There's my makeup box, some jewelry, mainly earrings, but also body jewelry. One of my favorite mantras I put on the wall. This is one of the two hanging storage closets. I actually took the hanging storage out and put shelves in here. That's what I was making earlier to utilize this closet in a different way. I have my go-to purses on the back of this door. This is a shelf that I made to put some essential grab items like underwear and socks and pajamas. You got my TV. I hung my jewelry here from necklaces. Inside of this cabinet is some backup health and beauty products and hair products. You have my altar here with my crystals and salt lamp and some board games underneath that shelf. This storage, I just have random items including my VCR DVD combo and some private items that I keep in my bedroom. And here's where my towels are. This is the other hanging closet and I actually utilize this space for hanging clothes. It's a mess right now, but I am in the process of reorganizing and also purging again to clean these things up. And this is where Prince sleeps, right next to my bed, which is an RV short queen size bed that I took from my last RV. There's a lot of pillows and I have a lot of storage underneath as well. There is also a pocket door here for privacy. Well, that's all for the inside of the RV. Let's take a look outside. When I park in long-term mode, I put up my front window shield and tire covers. I use this 60-second pop-up cabana for outdoor enjoyment because this model did not come with an awning. Attached to the back is my scooter hitch for my Pink Panther scooter, which adds about three to four feet to the back. It's my only other vehicle since I don't tow a car. Isn't she cute? On the driver's side is where the services are. This is the electric hookup. It's where you fill the gas. This is where the propane is stored. The sewer dump and the water line. On the passenger side are one large storage cabinet and two smaller ones. You have the refrigerator vent, the furnace vent, and the hot water heater. And there's a small cabinet behind this door that I put fluids and things for the truck. Yes, I'm a Patriots fan. Well, that's all I have for show and tell. If you like this video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more content coming really soon. Peace and blessings.